Welcome to the 2019 Introduction to Funding Opportunities for Schools, Key Action to Strategic Partnerships. First of all, we want to look at what Key Action 2 is. The projects supported under this Key Action are expected to bring positive and long-lasting effects on the participating organisations, on the policy systems in which such actions are framed, as well as on the organisations and persons directly or indirectly involved in the organisation or the on the in the organized activities. This key action is expected to result in the development, transfer and or implementation of innovative practices at organizational, local, regional, national or European levels. Projects funded under this key action are also likely to have a positive impact on the persons directly or indirectly involved in the activities. Strategic partnerships in the in the school education field are divided in three categories. Schools exchange partnerships, strategic partnerships supporting the exchange of good practice, strategic partnerships supporting innovation. In this presentation, we will first go through the principles that apply to all three types, and then we will focus on the specific characteristics for the different types of projects. Key Action 2 does have some specific aims, which are outlined in the 2019 Programme Guide. This is a list of the aims, which are linked to the objectives set by the European Commission. All different projects are expected to meet the following principles, but to, <clears throat> but to a variety extent, depending on the size and objectives of the project. They will need to develop innovative approaches, create a more modern, dynamic, committed and professional environment inside the organisation, which will integrate good practices and new methods into daily activities and increase capacity and professionalism to work at e, um, EU or international level. So, how does it work? Um, you can now see on the um, screen a list of programme countries. This list can be found in page 22 of the 2019 programme guide. All strategic partnerships must involve a minimum of, of partners from program countries, but under some key action to projects, you might also be able to involve organizations from partner countries. At least of these countries can be found in page, pages 22 to 24 of the 2019 program guide. We'll go into more detail later as to which projects can involve organizations from partner countries. You can see Serbia in red as this is a new addition to the um, eligible program countries. All Key Action 2 projects will need to address at least one horizontal or field specific priority. You can see a list of the horizontal priorities now on the screen. You can also find the full definition for each priority in, the, in page 102 of the 2019 program guide. You can now see a list of the school education field specific priorities. You can find the full definition of this in page 104 of the 2019 program guide. If you're going to apply for Key Action 2 funding, when completing your application form, it is important to take into account the assessment criteria as outlined on pages 111 to 113 of the 2019 program guide. Applications will be assessed against the above criteria. We also recommend that you keep an eye out um, on our website and our newsletter, as the guide for external experts will also be published and will provide further detail as to how your application will be assessed. We are now going to look at the different types of partnerships and the first type of project that we will cover uh, for Key Action 2 is School Exchange Partnership. This type of project aims to increase the school's capacity to work internationally, share and explore new teaching and learning methods, and enrich the curriculum. With this type of project, you can carry out different activities that can be the short or long-term mobility of staff, or short um, or long-term mobility of students. Depending on the type of activity, the duration will be, uh, vary. For short-term mobilities, the duration can be as little as three days, um, that doesn't include travel days, and as long as two months. For long-term mobilities, um, they can range from two to 12 months. 
In order to be eligible for funding, all schools change partnerships um, should be transnational. This means that at least two schools from two different program countries should be involved in the project. Um, all partnerships must be formed by at least two on a maximum of six schools. And the lead organization will apply for funding for the whole partnership. That means that whoever is applying will request the funding that they will need as a school, but also all the partners will need when carrying out the project. All projects must last between 12 and 24 months. However, if you intend to include long-term mobility of pupils, your project could last up to 36 months. Funding is capped at 16,500 euros per year and per participating school. While this is the formula that is used to calculate the total funding, the funding does not have to be split equally between the schools. For example, if two schools apply for the maximum amount of funding for a one-year project, they would apply for 33,000 euros. This, was, this would then be split, for example, uh, as 20,000 for one partner and 13 for another depending on each school's activities. <laughs> After school exchange partnership, we have two different types of, types of projects. We have um, cross-sector partnerships um, that support innovation or cross-sector partnerships that support exchange of practice. Um, for strategic partnerships supporting innovation, um, these projects focus on creating new tools and resources that will be widely disseminated within the field. And for strategic partnerships supporting exchange of good practice, um, they will focus on sharing good practice with different organizations within the partnership to upskill staff to tackle the partnership's shared needs. Depending on which type of project you decide to carry out, the questions on your application form will vary. In order to take part in strategic partnerships in the field of school education, partnerships mu uh, must be formed by at least three organizations from program countries. And whilst organizations from partner countries can be included, you will need to provide enough justification um, as to why they should be involved and what they will contribute to the project. The organizations involved in this type of projects um, can be involved in different uh, fields of education, youth and sports. You can find more information as to which organizations are eligible in page 108 of the 2019 program guide. The lead organization will apply for funding on behalf of the whole partnership. Therefore, you should make sure that you are applying for the funding that yourself and all your partners will need. All projects must last between 12 and 36 months. Well, there's no maximum size for the partnership. The funding for project management and implementation is capped at the equivalent amount for 10 partners. You can find more information about the eligibility criteria in pages 106 to 110 of the 2018 program guide. We are now going to look at budget categories that apply to um, the different key action two types of projects. It is important to note that the grant is a contribution to the cost of delivering the project and it may not cover all costs. Um, the first budget category that you can see is project management and implementation. Um, all projects will have requested this type of funding as, as is pre-populated by the form. This budget is a lump sum grant to support the cost of managing or being involved in the project, um, as well as smaller scale activities such as um, uh, small dissemination costs. Um, one of the costs that can be covered under this budget category is supply, uh, supply cover for schools. However, we do encourage you to arrange the activities in a way that would minimize the cost of supply cover, as this funding should be used to maximize the impact of the project and its dissemination. PMI is calculated based on the number of partners and the duration of the project. Cross-sector projects can also request funding for transnational project meetings. Um, this is funding that is awarded in order to set up meetings to discuss the project and plan project activities. 
However, this budget item is not available for school exchange partnerships. This grant is calculated on the basis of a unit cost per participant to cover the travel and subsistence with different, um, with different unit costs based on the distance band. For projects supporting innovation, um, you can request funding for um, items such as intellectual outputs, which is uh, funding that is a contribution to staff time um, associated with the creation of tangible um, um, outputs, which must be innovative, high quality, and have potential for wider dissemination and exploitation. Some of um, some examples of, of these outputs uh, could be apps, handbooks, um, curricula, um, IT tools, um, and many others. For supporting your innovation projects, you can also apply for a multiplier event funding. Um, this is only available if you have created or are going to create intellectual outputs. Um, and it is important that um, you make a note that these um, multiplayer events can only take place after the intellectual output that you are going to disseminate in the event um, has been completed. You can now see um, other types of costs that come under Key Action 2 projects. Um, all three budgets are available for all types of strategic partnerships when re uh, we're required and when enough justification has been provided. Exceptional costs and special needs support budgets are calculated on the basis of a, of a percentage of the estimated actual cost. In both cases, the need for the cost may be, must be fully explained and justified within the application. If there is not enough justification, the, request, um, the requested cost might not be approved. It is also possible for projects to include learning, teaching and training activities um, if these are embedded with broader project objectives and will support the achievement of these. Uh, funding under this category is available to co-finance travel um, which is based on distance band or um, if or you might be able to apply for exceptional costs for expensive travel if this is justified. Um, subsistence, which is applied under individual support and linguistic support, which is only available for long term mobilities. There are a number of specific rules and criteria which apply to each budget item. So it is very important to refer to the detailed budget guidance in pages 117 to 124 of the 2019 program guide. We will now cover a range of information that should support you when completing your application and provide you with information on how to strengthen your application. We recommend that you check the quality criteria that our external experts will use when assessing your application. We also recommend that you keep an eye on our website as we will publish the guide for external expert, which provides further information in regards to the criteria the external experts will use. Please bear in mind that all applications need to score a minimum of 60 to be considered for funding as well as at least half of the points in each one of the um, different um, criteria. Erasmus Plus funding is competitive, and therefore we recommend that you always try to put the best application that you can forward. The external experts will review the experience and expertise of the organizations within the partnership. Therefore, you need to make sure that you're um, that your partners have the necessary expertise to carry out the project. You will also need to ensure that all partners have roles to fulfill and try to make the division of roles as even as possible. You will need to make sure that everyone is aware of what you have applied for and what they are expected to do throughout the project. Your application can only be assessed based on the information that you have provided and you should make sure that your application is detailed and focused. The more information you provide whilst keeping it focused, 
the easier it will be for the external experts to fully understand your um, project and for you to demonstrate that you have thought the project through. Be realistic in terms of members of staff that can travel at the same time, the scale of your objectives, um, and anything else that, that can put into question how realistic your project is. Um, just consider, can you realistically achieve the objectives and what you're setting out to do in 12, 24, or 36 months? The projects for Key Action 2 applications are now available. Sorry, the forms for Key Action 2 applications are now available, and therefore, we recommend that you start working on this as soon as possible in order to ensure that you have enough time to fully complete the application and to ensure that you submit, a, uh, that you submit the form ahead of the deadline. You can now see on the screen a number of points that you should consider when writing your application's narrative. Please note that these are some indicative points and that you should, at all times, endeavour to answer fully the questions presented on the application form. You can now see on the screen other points that you might want to consider when preparing to apply. On the screen, you can see some of the advice we give to prospective applicants based on common feedback that the assessors have given in the past. So, for example, we always recommend that you give as much detail as possible, um, but you keep the information you are providing focused and related to the project. We recommend that your objectives are set out following the um, STAR or SMART method. Um, and that you always link the activities back to your objectives. You need to demonstrate good value for money. So while you should apply for um, as much funding as you need, realistically for your project, you should be realistic um, and try to make the most um, of, of the funding given. So for example, if you could send a number of people and then they can share what they've learned, that's everyone in the school have to go abroad. It's that type of thing that you might want to consider. Please ensure that you proofread your application and make sure that you dem you always demonstrated that you've, you've thought your project through. Um, you've considered different aspects that might come into play or might have an effect on your project. You can also um, see um, another of the points that you might want to consider when you're preparing to apply, and this is impact. We recommend that you access and use the resources that the UK National Agency developed to support you. The results of your project um, might be of a diverse, diverse nature and might be um, concrete, so tangible results, or they might be more intangible, such as skills or personal experiences. You should consider how you will measure these results and particularly those which are intangible, as they are harder to measure and record. When you're applying, you will also need to think about dissemination. At this point in time, you should be thinking of um, creating a dissemination plan that considers why you need to disseminate, what you will be sharing, how you will do it, when, um, who, um, whom, so who will your target audience be, um, where, which channels will you use. Um, so make sure to identify the targets, methods and frequency of dissemination as well as to what will be disseminated. You should refer to your dissemination plan in your application and relate this to the impact of your project and deliverables. We are now going to cover um, some information of things that you need to prepare um, ahead of, of the application deadline. In order to be able to apply, your school will need to register on the participant portal to obtain a participant identification code. This is a unique number for your organization and you will need it when completing your, applica your application form. If your school has taken part in the past in international activities 
or has applied for funding to do so, your school will already have a PIC. Only the person that registered the PIC will have access to the portal for your organisation. And therefore, if you do not have access to the login details, you will need to contact the European Commission directly. Please check if you have access to your PIC as soon as possible, as I mentioned, the details can take some time. Once you have access to your PIC or participant portal, you will need to upload this key document. Please note that the financial identification form will need to be either stamped by the bank or include the bank statement. The bank statement can have any sensitive information redacted. However, however, we would need to be able to see the name of the organization, address, and bank account on it. You can find further instructions on how to complete these documents when downloading them. On the screen, you have a list of the documents that you will need to submit or upload before, or at least at the time of applying. You can now access this application form. We will send a link to the forms when we send the follow-up email from the webinar. Please note that if you're applying for strategic partnerships for school education, you will need to select as part of the application form your project supports innovation or the exchange of good practice. There is a range of opportunities on offer for schools, from platforms to look for partners um, and disseminate your project, um, to courses being on offer. So we are now going to cover a few of this that might support you with your connection to application. First of all, we want to talk about the School Education Gateway. Um, this is a European portal, uh, which is a great website aimed primarily at school teachers across Europe. There are three tools which can help you uh, and which are most relevant to Erasmus+. Plus. You can see those now on the screen. The website provides clear information on education in initiatives across Europe. You can use your existing eTwin and login to access it, and you can use this page to find partners for Cash and Two projects. eTwinning is a free online community for schools in Europe, which allows you to find partners and collaborate on projects. eTwinning is active in over 40 countries and 25 languages. There is no application process and it is, safe, it is a safe environment to help you find partners. eTwinning complements Erasmus Plus extremely well, and you will be asked to comment, to comment on this in your application form. You can use eTwinning to start to collaborate and grow and extend your school's project. You can also use it to prepare outgoing staff and as a tool for impact and dissemination. You can see their contact details on screen now. Europass is a way to recognize the skills learned and acquired by those taking part in a mobility activity, and it is free to use. It is formed by five different documents that make the skills and qualifications easily understood across Europe. You have their details on the screen now. So, what should you do next? Remember that there are certain steps to follow and prepare ahead of your application. Make sure that you, that you are able to access and edit your PIC number, um, and that those responsible for signing legal documents in your school will be available to sign the application form and understand the application form and are able to sign any of the other documents that we might require. I would strongly encourage you to check our written guidance to register for one of the events that we're running to support applicants um, or for a one-to-one -one call to make the most of the opportunities that um, we offer to you to make sure that you put the strongest application uh, possible forward. 
We are here to help you, so make sure to contact us with any questions. And please submit ahead of the deadline as we will be unable to accept, to accept late submissions. The deadline for Key Action 2 schools funding is Thursday, 21st of March, 2019 at 11am UK time. This deadline is set by the European Commission and is applicable across Europe. Please get your applications in well in advance of the deadline as late applications will not be accepted. To conclude, I would like to remind you of the support that the UK National Agency will be offering in the run up to the Key Action 2 deadline for schools. To apply for funding, you will need to complete and submit an application form in advance of the deadline. We will be creating and posting on our website a video on how to complete the form um, and that will go into more details in regards to the different budget se sections. Um, we are also running a series of events that will um, allow you to complete your form independently while getting to ask the um, National Agency staff any questions that you might have. We are also offering one-to-one -one support calls where you can schedule a call for half an hour with a member of the, the National Agency staff to ask any questions you might have about your project. Additionally, you can always contact us using the email address um, that you can see on the screen or the phone number that you can see on the screen. So thank you very much for watching this video and the best of luck with your application. Thank you.